money supply, any change in the money supply affects interest rates, which then we know down the road affects aggregate demand and scope. Last class I spoke about Keynesian economics. And when did Keynesian economics kind of reach its peak and begin to decline? Remember what year we pointed out? When was Keynesian economics the dominant school? Great Depression. From about 1936, when he wrote his book, The, Great, uh, the General Theory, until about 1970-75, okay? What school began to overshadow Keynesian economics? The Chicago School, which was a neoclassical based, and in this particular instance with Dr. Friedman, Milton Friedman, the School of Monetarism. Monetarism, monetarists, people who focused on the money supply as being the biggest determinant of our economic well being. Remember, the economy corrects itself to full employment. Neoclassical. Remember that? So we don't need to be overly concerned about unemployment. It will always self-correct. The one thing we do need to be concerned about is that we don't get inflation. Because high rates of inflation destroy your way of living. And so the focus from the monetarists is less on unemployment. It's a focus on inflation. And they have a view on what causes inflation. Too much money. If I can buy a loaf of bread for a dollar today, but tomorrow there's three times more money in the economy, what's that loaf of bread going to cost me? More. Because with more money, what happens to the value of money when you have more money out there? Each dollar buys less. That's inflation. So their argument is, inflation is caused, inflation is a function of too much money. And to get through their reasoning, and I'm going to make you do this, you've got to look at this equation, MV equals PQ. It's called the equation of exchange. We're going to go through this in very rudimentary style. But then we're going to develop that out, and this is some foreshadowing. It's going to look like this. The percentage change in the money supply plus the percentage change in velocity equals the percentage change in price or inflation plus the percentage change in output. This is the equation you're going to need to be able to work with and explain on the exam. We won't do that today, but let me just give you five minutes at the most on this, okay? Imagine this is an economy where M is the money supply, P is the rate of inflation or the price level, and Q is real GDP. And then, what is V? Velocity. Velocity. What is velocity? How much money, how fast is being spent? Yeah. Being independently wealthy, which you have to be to teach at Santa Fe, <laughs> I always carry around a $10 bill. How many times do you think that $10 bill will be spent this year? Once every day? Once every other day? Twice a day? How about a one dollar bill? I got plenty of them. We <laughs> spent more often. Yeah. Well, suppose we had an economy here. I know some of y'all think about robbing me on the way to the car, so I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't help it. You know? <laughs> suppose this is an artificial economy, and the only thing they produce is umbrellas. And last year they produced 100 umbrellas. And the umbrella sold each umbrella for $8. That's the only thing produced in this economy. 
100 umbrellas sold for $8 a piece. What was their GDP? $800. People spent $800. So P times Q is total spending. You see what I'm saying? Suppose in this economy they also had $400 in the money supply. How many times did each dollar get spent on the average to spend $800? Two times. 400 times two. So this is an identity, this equation. It's always true. These are equal because of the way we define the terms. Total spending equals total spending. Total spending equals GDP. Same thing. You with me so far? Now, suppose next year they also produced 100 umbrellas. But they let the money supply go to $800. If the velocity didn't change, if this was still two for the velocity, what was the price for umbrellas? $16. $16. What caused this inflation? The money supply grew more than the real output. You with me so far? What causes inflation? When the money supply grows faster than what we're really producing, what we're trying to buy. That's the only thing that causes inflation. And they said, well, we've done our research and we believe two things. Belief number one, this is monetarism, one. The velocity, income velocity of money is constant. It never changes. We're simplifying here, but it's always the same. Friedman, through his research, says over time, I believe this is pretty true. It's either constant or predictable or very, very slow to change. Is that per day? What is that, too? It's annual. By, by velocity, you mean how many? Define that, that term velocity for what you're talking the, the, how, do you, how would you measure it? You take your GDP divided by your money supply. Okay. And you look at that over time. Did that change? Okay. And his conclusion was no, it didn't. Or not significantly. Second assumption has to do with GDP. Q is GDP. What does the neoclassical school of what does the neoclassical school assume about output GDP? Say again. Yeah, but but at what level of GDP will we operate at? Full employment. Remember that. We'll always be at or moving towards full employment. So Q will always equal QFE, full employment. You ready so far? So let's go back to the numbers here. What if we said that next year we're going to produce 200 umbrellas? And we know the velocity is constant. And we want the prices to stay the same. We don't want any inflation. What should we do to the money supply? Increase it to how much? 800. If output doubles, then double the size of the money supply. You won't have inflation. If you increase the money supply too fast, you get inflation. If you increase it too slow, you drag the economy down into a recession. So here's their bottom line. This is a concluding line for the day. I know some of y'all are losing attention here. Hang on. Call a monetarist rule. In order to avoid inflation, I'm not going to write that. In order to avoid inflation, let the money supply grow at the same rate as real GDP, or as output, if you like. Think about how simple a world that is. You don't have to worry about unemployment because it fixes itself. And the only thing you have to do with the money supply is don't grow too fast or too slow. After that, the economy is going to hum, but okay, it's going to do great. True or false? <laughs> what is this?
That would be a good final exam question. And the answer begins with two words, what? Yes, it depends. It depends. <laughs> and then you make it up, because this is macroeconomics, right? Okay, I'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. Four-day weekend, stay out of trouble. And if not, keep bring video, okay?